What's going on, everybody? It is Monday, March 10th, 2014. Thank you for tuning in to our show. This is the 404. My name is Jeff Bacalar. My name is Justin Yu. I'm Ariel Nunez. Welcome to another week of fantastic podcast programming delivered straight to your ear brains. That's what I call them now, ear mm. brains. Yeah. So we get in here, <clears throat> and you know, Mondays are rough because no one's happy about being alive on a Monday. And Justin's like, oh, I got a story for you. Got You're a pretty gonna, good story. Your, your mind is going to blow. I so, had a good weekend. So let's not even tease what we have coming up. I just want to hear what the hell it is. We'll get to that. But yeah, let me tell you guys a story because it actually involves you too. It involves uh -oh. me. It's very rare that I come in on Monday. I'm like, hey, I got to tell you something about yourself that you don't know yet. Mm -hmm. So um, can I ask you a few like preliminary questions? No. I just don't <laughs> want this to compromise anything I do. No, like, it won't are, make are it you, weird. Are you going to tell this story and then everyone finds out I have something wrong with me? No. It's not going to make it weird this for you. Like you won't feel life comfortable. Or death. Yeah, this isn't my last episode. This isn't like for me personally. <laughs> I got another job. This, is, this isn't like a life or death <laughs> thing. No, for no, 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 no. Nothing bad. It's good. It's good. Okay. That's why I'm smiling. Wait, wait. I'm not <laughs> Are you pregnant? <laughs> I'm not, but Ariel is. No. Nah. Listen to this story. So I was over the weekend in Maryland. And, why? Uh, I know. It's weird, right? So one of my friends, Sean, he actually has a farm about uh, maybe an hour south of Delaware. So okay. right on the tip. And uh, the farm is a huge, huge, I think it's like 30 acres or something like that. Okay. So anyway, we were there for the weekend. A couple friends met us there, and we were hanging out with his family, you know, doing things like shooting guns, went skeet shooting. Whoa. So much fun. Look, here's a picture of me skeet shooting. I just brought it. You skeet shot? Yeah. Damn. I've only done that one other time before, but it was so much fun. Skeet, skeet. Yeah. Skeet, skeet, skeet. <laughs> Look at you holding the gun. How many uh, miles back were you blown after shooting? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. I had it the wrong way, so I poked a hole in my shoulder with that. See, so was there like a nice recoil with that thing? It was pretty big. It's yeah. a rifle, right? It was, a, it was right? a double barrel, twelve gauge shotgun. Damn! Look at that. What thing. I'm holding right there. Woo. It's crazy. So it was great. double barrel. Yeah, yeah, two barrels. Nice wide spread with mm -hmm. that, huh? Yeah, yeah. Made it a little bit easier to uh, shoot the skeet. But let me hear your best pull. Pull. <laughs> <laughs> so we were we were doing all kinds of things. We were shooting guns. We were kind of touring around the farm and checking out the livestock. They have horses and things like that. And played Monopoly. But the best thing <laughs> Play was Monopoly. <laughs> yeah, because when you're on a farm, you're not you know you're not asking for the Wi-Fi password. You're doing farmish things, which oh, include yeah. stuff you have to plug in. Yeah, but still, like Monopoly still doesn't like. Oh, well, there's a category. lot of people there. You know, we're playing with this sure, family and sure. stuff like that. So it, it was great. It's great to get out of the city. Great to hang out with family that's not yours. What town was it? Uh, it was in Woodlawn. Doesn't nah. matter. Yeah, I'd never been to Maryland either. <laughs> I'm kidding. So anyway, uh, over lunch, yeah. all of his family was there. You know, he had aunts, cousins, uncles, dogs, a lot of people, right? Maybe like 20 people Damn. in this room. So we were all eating lunch, and I kind of struck up a conversation with his uncle, Uncle Rick. And we were talking for about 15 minutes, you know, just shooting the shit, talking about the farm in New York and things. And about 15 minutes into the conversation, he's like, I got to show you something. And he sort of pulls out his iPhone, right? And this whole mm -hmm. time he's had a laptop in front of him. Um, oh. So he, he pulls out his iPhone. So, he, so this is Wi-Fi password territory. He had is. something going yeah. on, yeah. So he pulls out his iPhone and he starts like typing on it. And he's like, you got to see this. This is crazy. You look exactly like this guy. And he holds out his iPhone, and it's a screenshot of the 404. No. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Isn't that insane? It was a screenshot of literally what you're looking at right no now. No way. You're watching the video, just He's like, hey, in front of the TV at the desk. I'm not too observant, but you got to see well, this. Well, no. I mean, I, I, I don't know if he watches or listens, but regardless, he's like, you got to you gotta check this out. So you look you, exactly like you this guy. like this guy. <laughs> and I was wait, like. Wait, so, so, so what was your first reaction to clearly seeing yourself on? his screen where you're I mean, like ah. I was that kind is of speechless me. for a second because I had no idea. It was a, literally the last place you know, it was like I a joke. we would meet a listener. Yeah, I figured, you know, maybe my buddy Sean told yeah. me or something. So I was just like, that's me. <laughs> 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 that is me. I am Justin. So then he's like, no way. And 
it was it was insane. It was so funny. So then he was like, "Man, I've been listening to the show for the past five years. I listen every single night oh, after that dinner." Is so awesome. And he's man. You know, he's a big tech guy. He's awesome. So I wanted to give a shout out to Uncle Rick because I figured Dude. he'd be listening to the show. So thanks for listening, man. Hope to see you back in Woodlawn again. Right on, Uncle nice. Rick. Dude, so that is so wacky. And yeah. You look, and he didn't think think for a second like, oh, this guy's name is Justin. Also, he's yeah. from New York. Yeah, yeah. It's just a crazy coincidence. And he's like, <laughs> you sound exactly like him. Also, yeah. <laughs> it turns out people actually listen to our show. <laughs> this whole time, I thought these cameras weren't even plugged in. So thought we were just talking to each other. So how did he? Did you? get a little background story like how did he get into it uh um, he's actually a big cnet fan so yeah. we were talking about molly and brian cooley he watches all those shows oh so right on i think he's yeah he's a big tech guy holy moly that is such a crazy story yeah yeah it was awesome that's very cool that's yeah. cool so we're doing decent work here i think doing all something right, right yeah. i think yeah how was your guys's weekend it's great yeah yeah how about yeah. you ariel yeah didn't do much. <laughs> no work. That's something. Yeah, that's something. I guess. That's the rule yeah. of threes with weekends. It's like for every three people, someone's going to have a meh weekend. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's True. science. True. What can you do? Uh, so for the show today, we got four really great stories. Um, we're going to talk about an abandoned movie theater, an outdoor movie theater in Egypt that was just discovered. Um, then we're going to talk about a photographer that made $15,000 in one day on Instagram. Okay. It's unheard of. We should all be doing this and making money. I think Ariel deserves some money. For yeah, this right? Mm. It's a good lesson I here. I think so too. And then we're going to talk about um, some of some new technology by Audi, you know, the car manufacturer, mm-hmm. that can basically hack traffic lights. Oh, that sounds like perfectly legal. Really safe. Yeah. And then we're going to finish up with a new app out of South by Southwest that lets you reinvent the old school AOL chat rooms. So I figured we're probably going to reminisce a little. Stop trying to make South by Southwest happen. It's going on right now. We'd just, be remiss to not mention anything about it. Just can someone go over there and just be like, everyone go home. Stop trying to make this happen. It's one year. What do you mean it's one year? Well, it, it had one really good year when Twitter was in, you know, announced there. And then after that, they've been trying to relive the glory days. And it doesn't really and work. And now it's like seven and a half weeks long. Yeah, what was the second best thing to be introduced at South by? Twitter is obviously the first. Is there even one runner-up that I comes feel to like your mind? It's all that really happens is that Austin makes money. Yeah, that's good. That's good for Austin. Keeps Austin weird. Keeping it weird. That's right. Like mm-hmm. I don't know. Do bands get discovered there? Do movies get discovered there? Uh, I think you have to be pretty well established in both those areas if you're going to perform. And I don't know. Yeah, it's like... Uh, the I, music one is huge. The music yeah. part is huge. Right, but yeah. like Coldplay is playing there, so they oh, yeah. clearly don't it's, need... It's blown up, for yeah. sure. Yeah, it's yeah. not an independent festival, for sure. So it's yeah. like, what's the point? Well, it's good for people, for tech people to get together and talk outside of CES. That's right. something. Yeah. I'd like to go there one day. One, Just one day. Yeah, I don't want to be in a panel conversation, no. but... Jesus, we can no. attend. All right. I'll, I've never been to Austin before either. Have you guys? I've heard it's cool. I've been. Yeah. You've been? How is it? It's, I've been to like four South by Southwest, and they're always been fun oh, yeah? from what I remember. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if I were going to get dragged out to Texas, I'd probably prefer to be in Austin than anywhere else. Well, that's yeah. the one city from what I've, I've heard. That's the one city you want to go because it's the least like actual Texas. Yeah. Yeah. It's which cool. Which sounds like the one I would want to be at. Right. Yeah. You know, like All if right. I'm here, I want to feel like I'm not here. So. Well, speaking of deserts, let's get to this first story because I think this is so cool. Um, there's an <laughs> astil- You don't think this is cool? No, you said speaking of deserts. Yeah. Like Texas. Is a desert? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that. Are there parts of <laughs> deserts? In I thought Texas? it was mostly like New Mexico and Arizona. But maybe what perhaps Texas is a what desert. What is the criteria for being a desert? Cactus, sand? cacti, and sand and rattlesnakes. And sand in Texas. And like ca- caverns? Yeah. Can I I'm sorry. Story? I'm sorry. I was a ge- I was a geography major. I'm sorry. Um, so there's this Estonian photographer uh, who, on his blog over the weekend, just posted photos of an incredible discovery that he just made. And this is sort of loosely tech related, but I wanted to show you guys anyway. And this is really going to benefit our video viewers because you got to see these photos. Yeah. So he just posted pictures of what he found, which is an abandoned outdoor movie theater. In the middle of the Sinai Desert in Egypt. So check out these photos. It's located in the southern tip of the Sinai pen- Peninsula. And you can sort of see in these photos that it's right at the bottom of a desert mountain range. 
What are you giggling about? I'm giggling that it looks like the Flintstones made this. Yeah, yeah, no, that's the cool part about it is that this is the desert, so obviously, you know, it's going to age a lot of the seats. And it's hundreds of seats wide. You can see there's several rows, right? It's enormous. It almost looks, it looks kind of fake. It like almost it looks was, like an art installation. It looks like it was placed there. Yeah, well, it was placed there. They didn't grow out of the ground or anything. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. But I mean, like, recently. Right. How old is it? So it was built at the turn of the millen- uh, I'm sorry, at the turn of the millennium. So, you know, a little more than a decade. Okay. N- not too long. But it was built by this French stoner. And when I first read this story, they referred to him as a French stoner. I thought it meant... He worked with he rocks. A, yeah, he was a stoner. Yeah, like a but geologist. No, he's actually a big weed smoker oh, and that's okay. what we're calling him a stoner. Like an idea man. Yeah. Desert. Exactly. This no was movie theater. a high idea. Yeah. This is a high idea from this is you know why it's not cool to get stoned and have a lot of money because then you come up with stuff like this. <laughs> right. So he's got way too much money and he decided to come up with this thing to show movies in an alternative location. So, so how do you get there? It seems to be in the middle of friggin nowhere. Yeah it really is. So you have to be brought here on a tour. This is weird. Yeah, and, and now it's sort of a relic because, actually, unfortunately, it's kind of a tragic story. No movie has ever been shown in this theater. So the story behind this is that the idea wasn't really well received because no one wants to watch a movie in the freaking desert. Yeah. It's and super it's gotta hot. Be, it's well, dusty. No, well, no, it's got to be nighttime, and then it's freezing in the desert. Oh, right. Yeah, that's a great yeah. point. It's freezing. There's no concession stand, so you're just in the middle of a desert watching a movie. <laughs> Terrible idea. We all we are doing is confusing the future with this thing. Right. Yeah. Like, that's all we're doing. Like every time someone finds this, they're gonna be scratching their heads yeah. and being like, "What the hell?" Were they're they gonna doing? think this is the first movie theater. <laughs> right. And then exactly. after we discovered air conditioning and put it all inside. <laughs> so on opening night, so ironic, the generator that ran everything cut out. Probably because there was gallons of sand getting poured into it. This is so weird. Yeah. So here, I'll scroll through the photos while we're talking about you it. You got to see this. If you're not watching us, please go to cnet.com slash the 404. These photos are ridiculous. Yeah. All the seats are completely rusted out. The generator broke down, so they weren't able to watch a movie. And it was never repaired. Eventually, it fell into disrepair. And the guy who actually built this, that French stoner, was never found again. He disappeared, likely because this theater had to get funded externally. And when it failed, he probably didn't want to have to pay back the thousands of dollars it cost to get it out there. Uh, it's, it's just such a, it's such a wacky idea. Like, would it, uh, really? Like, you have to get there through some tour? Yeah. And then what? And, there, and does this tour have 500 people in it? Yeah, right. What the Freak, man, this is nuts. You know what's really cool is that, and let me see if I can pull up a link for Still this. Still see it on Google Maps, too. Yeah, that's want. what I was going to say. I'm going to pull up a Google Maps image of it because apparently you could still see sort of what looks to be like, like the rows. Row seating. Yeah, yeah, so we'll post that in the show blog because I don't have Crazy. it on the screen. But yeah, it's really cool. Although, maybe not the best idea. No. Good no. idea, bad execution. Clearly an awful idea among the worst I've ever heard of. <laughs> right. But really bizarre. I mean, outdoor movie festivals are cool, right? But they're always mm-hmm. like in a park or a bandstand somewhere. Right. They're not in the middle of a desert. What's so wacky is like if you pull out of Google Maps when you're looking at this thing, if you have the time to research it, there's just nothing for hundreds of miles in every direction. Yeah, right. There's like a road kind of mm-hmm. a few miles south and, and east of it. But that's it. Yeah. It's crazy. So, yeah, this is what we're looking at here. So nuts. Oh, my goodness. It's crazy. Yeah, so that's the map. And then I guess if you zoom in, you can actually see the rows of seats. I actually thought it was maybe Photoshopped in the beginning. but I thought thought this story was fake when I first saw it. Yeah, that makes sense. So you can check out this latitude and longitude there. Ooh, that's Google Earth. This is a good one. Yeah. Cool. All right, let's, uh, let's see what else we got here. All right, so moving on, speaking of photographers, how many followers do you have on Instagram, Mario? I think we actually uh, talked about this. 40,000, something crazy? No, you I definitely think have like more 1600. followers than all of us. Oh, easily. 1,600. 1600. Last time I checked, yeah. Damn. 1600. That's not that much. <laughs> Damn. It's way more than, I don't even know how many I have. I feel like I have 400. Yeah, something like that. Wait, definitely under 400. Well, you guys have a lot on Twitter, though. On Twitter, yeah. yeah. Twitter's, Those are all bots, Twitter's though. going out, though, <laughs> man. It's at, it's at the end of its lifetime. It's a new MySpace. Yeah. yeah. Would you ever think that you could actually make money 
off your Instagram followers. No, I never thought I could. Yeah, right. Is there Especially, a way? Yeah, there's definitely a way, and I think you should do this. Oh, okay. So this is a story of a photographer that made 15 grand in one day by selling photos that he printed off his Instagram feed. Wow. Right? It's really cool. The guy's name is Daniel Arnold. And I actually followed this guy on Instagram, which what made that's what kind of made the story so interesting for me. So you had been following I've him. been following this dude, yeah. Oh, you're so cool. He actually only has 34,000 followers on Instagram, which is not that many it's compared to the popular page if you click on one yeah. of those guys. Still a lot. But still, definitely a lot. And he posts a lot of photos of sort of interesting street photography. He lives in New York, and that's kind of why you know it's, it's cool for guys like us that live here. Um, you know, he posts pictures of street photography. So a lot of it, you know, obviously happens on subway platforms and inside the cars and things like that. Um, the, my favorite one, I should have pulled it up earlier, but it's basically a guy wearing Google glasses on an iPhone. Like, so he's staring at the iPhone through his Google glasses, yeah. but he's in front of an ad that has a skier, like a downhill skier on a snow covered mountain. And it's like words encouraging you to go outside. Right, and he's like just so funny. Yeah, that's pretty good. So things like that, right? Whatever like stuff he finds interesting. Um, but you know, posting photos on Instagram doesn't really pay the bills. And a day before his 34th birthday, he was kind of low on rent. And he wasn't sure how he was going to make it. This was last month. Does this guy not have a job? Or? He is a photographer. But you know, when you work freelance, you're not sure when your next paycheck's coming. Up. Okay. So he was kind of in a drought. He posted this message on Instagram a month ago, a day before his birthday. And this message reads, hello, I just turned 34 this second. For one day only, I'm going to sell four by six prints of whatever you want from my Instagram archive for $150 each. I swear I'll never sell anything like this again. If you're interested, just take a screenshot of it. Send me the screenshot and your address. I will send it off to you. Okay, t- uh, t- can I ask questions? Yes. Yeah. Um, he says, I will never sell anything this cheap again. $150 is not cheap. Well, depending on who the photographer is, I think that's a pretty good deal. I'm just struggling deal. with the fact that like this guy's a starving artist. Mm-hmm. And 4 but by 6 prints are not very big. They're not big. Instagram r- resolution sucks. Right. Like if you were to print out a re- well, like blow up an Instagram photo, it would probably look like dog crap. Well, it depends. I mean, what uh, Instagram um iPhone photos are what like 8 you, they're Megapixels way larger. Now? Yeah, they're so way you larger. can print off based on the original photo you take. But the original is one thing, but Instagram doesn't do that. Instagram yeah, but he's makes not, a way smaller thing. Right, but so you got to figure. The original? He's, yeah, you got to figure he's okay. not taking screenshots. And Fair enough. Off that, but like my my whole thing is like the juxtaposition of him saying, "I have no money, but I sell my prints for 150 bucks." Right, each. right. But Strange to me. It is kind of it's kind of reaching, right? It's yeah. a little ambitious, but it worked for him. How did it work? It worked because the day after he got so many requests that ended up being fifty. $15,000 worth wow. of orders that he got. This is the one that we're looking at right now. It's, it's right. one of the most popular photos that got selected for print. That's pretty neat. Yeah, you want to describe so, this? So for, he's taking, so he has a photo just of like a, it's like one, how would you describe that aesthetic? It's a, oh, oh, the aesthetic of the photo? Yeah, it's just, a, it's, a, it's just like a, like a guy on a grainy. train staring at a guy dressed in a Santa Claus it's like outfit. still life. You know? yeah. like that's, is that a woman or a man? It. I think that's a man. That's a pants pantsless man wearing pantsless a santa, santa costume is that what he titled the photograph pantsless santa stares at commuter should make sense yeah <laughs> and I then like yeah the commuter sort of like an old school he's just unfazed man. by him yeah so that's kind of cool i mean i'm assuming a lot of college kids are buying this because they don't want to afford they can't afford bigger bucks, art bucks man yeah no, it's a lot. It's a, right, Ari? Am I, I crazy? Wouldn't, I wouldn't pay 150 for I'd a I'd pay like $15 picture. for a print. I yeah. think what's cheapening it for you is the fact that everybody has access to viewing it, like on Instagram. Because obviously people pay way more for prints of art, totally. photo prints, and totally. things like that. He's probably printing it just as professionally. But that's not But why. is it the fact that it's so overexposed? Not not in terms Maybe. of the film. I can't but quite put my finger on why I'm not like this. It's definitely worth, you know, an artist's photo is definitely worth totally. $150 mm-hmm. and more. Totally. I'm not why saying is it's this bothering you. It's, I don't know. I think it's just bothering me because it doesn't seem like. I just, first, I don't understand why all of a sudden people are like, what? He's, only, he's selling all this stuff? Yeah. Is it because he's not a. I can't tell You his don't recognize deal. his name? Is that. No, right? no, not at all. Of course not. Because if I was like, oh, you know, Ansel Adams or Banksy, for example. Still doesn't mean was, anything to me. I'm saying. I just I just don't understand why like all of a sudden he's like man I got no money I might as well pay like sell what I do for a living 
Well, that's what every artist does, right? I mean, maybe that's not the goal to make money, but if you can do it and make 15 grand in a day, yeah. that's, that's good. So is he going to do this for, for good now? How, how I, well, apparently, according to his message, it's a one-time deal, but 15 grand should pay for his rent might for change a his mind. little while. Right. Maybe not in New York, but this is the second most popular photo that got printed and requested. That's cool. So that's what? It looks like a guy. No, it's a guy sitting in a coffee shop or something. And it's sort of like looking through. It's just a reflection yeah. of what he sees. But he's also he also has an Ash Wednesday right, thing right. on his forehead, which always like dramatizes whatever you're looking at. <laughs> right. Which just means like this dude's seen some shit. Yeah, exactly. Um, I have a, so now are we upset about the cheapening of uh, Instagram with like all right, well he's using clearly a better camera. Yeah, that's true. I know Ariel feels passionately about yeah, this because he's I hate that. He hates that. Oh, you're, you're talking about how he's cheating. Right, because he himself has been accused of such yes. uh, blasphemy. But he doesn't. But he yeah. doesn't. And he's, I don't know, man. I, I'm not too mad at it. If you're really a photographer and that's what you do, yeah. if you want to post your examples of your photo, that's I cool. I think it's okay. But like, for me, I don't take Instagram that serious. So right. my whole thing is it's cool that I could do these things with an iPhone. Right. So I, I think it's also cool because... It's okay for him because he doesn't really post personal pictures. It's strictly a professional yeah, Instagram Yeah, he can page. do whatever he wants. I'm like, digging it. I'm looking at your Instagram page right now. You don't mm -hmm. even have to pull it up. But it'd be, me? No, you, Ariel. Uh -huh. It might be weird if I asked for this picture of Christine to get blown up <laughs> yeah. for me. Like, yeah. I'll give you 150 <laughs> bucks for this photo of Let me Christine. See that. Yeah. Throw that right there. Let me see that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this is a great photo, though. Yeah, I really see, like it. Don't, it don't, would be weird if I had your girlfriend. Ariel's selling himself short, man. I don't take things seriously. <laughs> this is like perfectly framed. You took your time. Yeah. You have an eye for framing a photo. Yeah. yeah but Thank I don't you. Take it seriously. I mean, I mean, I'm just naturally gifted. <laughs> it's just, I mean, Instagram to me is just fun. It is. Yeah, fun. It sure. is fun. But For yeah, sure. if you want to buy that picture of Christine, yeah, 150. Take 150? it. 150? That's a bargain. For sure. <laughs> Sign me up. Sign me right Whoa, up. Whoa, you know what's really weird? What? Uh, this is totally off topic, mm -hmm. kind of on topic. But you posted this photo of the bent bike frame. Oh, yeah. This is actually a work of art, right? Because I've I seen so, this yeah. bike in another, like, it's been, I've seen it locked up south of the city, like, sort of in Chinatown. Mm. But you're clearly posting this. This is like what? In Central Park or something? Uh, no, it wasn't Central Park. I, I don't. I honestly don't this? really remember. I was just walking. Oh no, I think it was in a uh, in the Lower East Side somewhere. I don't, yeah, because it's remember. just like basically a bike frame with wheels, but it's yeah. folded up in half to sort of look like it's a bike accident. Yeah, yeah. which I thought it was until I just saw this picture. Yeah. Sorry, it was a yeah. It was in some park. I don't. I was just walking by and I saw it. I was like, oh, that's weird. See, I would definitely get a photo of this. Like I could see this hanging up. Yeah, one fifty, man. One fifty. So <laughs> just, we'll talk about that later. What does that bike art say to you? That here. It speaks mm. to me. Does that bike yes. art say something so to this you? This reflects on the transitiveness of our. Well, don't forget, man. Cycling, temporal. like that is a, it is a, it's a universal <laughs> language, <laughs> is it not? Yeah. Right. It's not good. many things transcend all cultures and 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 boundaries and stuff like it's that. True. The way bicycles do. A lot of people know how to ride a bike. It's they universal. Certainly do. And once you learn. You'll know forever. Every time after, it's like riding a bike. This yep. is true. This is true. <laughs> there you have it. That's deep. Um, That's deep, man. That's yeah. deep for Monday. Whoa. Yeah, it is. Woo! Whoa. Whoa. Yeah. That's our whoa moment of the week. Uh, you know what the best part about riding a bike in the city is? Ariel, I'm sure you've done this before. Mm -hmm. You probably have. To. You've ridden a bike in the city. Going before. through red lights. Close. Going through intersections and catching green lights when you're riding down the avenue. Oh, you mean riding the snake? The wave. It's called the mm. snake. Yeah. So yeah. describe what I'm talking about for people that don't. Well, know it's mostly assigned to a tip when you're in a, a cab. Right. Yeah. It works you, in cabs. And, too. and if you're traveling north or south, not mm. east and west, north or south so, on an avenue block. Which yeah, because it's a grid. It's a grid, and avenues go north or south. And if you catch those lights, yeah. you can just ride it on through morning. Yeah. You can mm -hmm. catch up to, I bet you can probably catch about 20 lights if you do it the right for way. For sure. Yeah. For sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, on a bike, you have the benefit of not having to necessarily obey traffic Yeah, laws. you're not really catching lights. You're yeah, and you can also split lanes. So, right. you know, as long as you have that green, you could definitely go from, you know, Upper East Side down to Chinatown in maybe 10 minutes. It's crazy. It's great. I love it. I like take Fifth Avenue all the way down, just bomb. The, oh, Man, I, you know, I've had this fantasy for some time now. I just want to, like, 
ride on the back of your bike with my arms around you? <laughs> Could do that. <laughs> Can we do that? I need to get some pegs. Yeah. And no, maybe- no, no, no. I just want to. I want to like share the seat. Ew. What? Why or is that not? <laughs> how cool? do we do that? I don't know. Do you know how to how a bike works? Because then I would I'm have thinking to, more. Maybe I'm thinking like a motorcycle. You can maybe sit sort of like cross-legged on the top tube, and then you could I could like hold you while I'm yes, riding. Yes, let's do that. So my arms will still be touching the handlebars, but you'd be like right here. We just need to be on a bike together. Is the bottom <laughs> line here? I mean, there's tandem bikes too. We could do that. A bicycle built for two? Yeah. <laughs> Sign me up. Nice. Ariel, you want to get on this? Yeah. Pe- yeah. Pegs are at a third seat. I'm there. Oh that. my god! Yeah. How cool would it be if you someone saw the three of us riding down a bike? <laughs> Riding down Broadway. And that was the last time we saw them. Yeah. <laughs> All wearing helmets and like reflector vests. Yeah. That'd be sick. Sounds Gotta make it happen. Hell yeah. <laughs> Clown bike. <laughs> um, so you could do it in a car too, right? If you're driving your own car and you sort of time it right. But Hell a lot yeah. of it is dependent on traffic too, obviously, in sure. New York. That's a problem. You're going to get stopped up eventually. But for everyone else who doesn't live in New York, Audi just invented a new technology that'll let you beat traffic lights. It's pretty cool, right? I mean, you've heard about, you know, guys hacking up remote controls and things like that. Everyone has their own theory on how to make the light in front of you turn green. It's the the classic one is like, you got to flash your blinker. Yeah, no, yeah. no, that never works. Because <laughs> that's the secret. <laughs> there it is. All traffic lights have them built in. You just flash yeah. your brights and it just goes green like that. The idea, right, is because in the event of an emergency, a cop could turn on his lights. Right. And then that would notify the lights i mean does it get much simpler than that (laughs) right there's no way that's real clearly what happens it's definitely not real but this is a thing right so it's called smart city traffic light assistance system how can this be okay it's i don't know how it's legal but it sort of makes sense and this is how it works they debuted it at ces this year and cnet actually took a tour of it so you you can check out that blog online but you know, normally these things sort of employ cameras to sort of, you know, scan lights to see how long it'll take for it to turn. But this actually relies on local data sources, they say. Local data sources that are fed in through the car via Wi-Fi. And apparently there are public access systems that let you know the traffic patterns in your area. Oh, so it's not... So it's pumping in public data that you so can get So it's not about necessarily traffic. changing lights. Right. It's just aggregating traffic light length data exactly yeah gotcha and then you see in the dashboard here there's a little uh logo for a stoplight you know the red yellow and green and you know using that in conjunction with your speedometer and the gps in your car it'll basically tell you exactly the speed you need to drive in order to hit green lights all the way to your destination that's pretty sick right I mean, the thing is, a lot of times that speed will be less than or, you know, sometimes significantly greater than the speed posted. Well, think about it. So you have to watch out. You know what I mean? Like, sometimes it'll say, like, you need to drive 75 miles an hour. Right. Well, I don't think it would do anything over the speed limit. It wouldn't say, like, hey, you better go 120. Maybe not that fast. But what I think what it could do is you could save money like this, right? Yes. So if you were to follow the directions Uh to a T and drive at that speed and hit every light, right. you would then lessen the stop, the braking you would do, which in turn would prevent, would, you would get better gas mileage. Yeah, you would definitely get better gas mileage. You know, from Audi, they tell us that you can save emissions by 15% or 900 million liters of fuel a, a, a year collectively. Right. So, you know, that's amazing. I it think just, it just sounds more like the the inevitable future of automated driving vehicles. One step in the right direction yeah. for sure. I remember when I uh, I drove my mom's Honda CRV in high school a little bit. Yeah. And every time I would stop and then you know start up again at a green light, it would hit like four thousand RPMs because the engine was so weak. Right. And that probably ate up so much gas. Right. Imagine if I had this in high school. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. Um, while we're like gushing over like the cool potential of this, let us not overlook the fact that this is kind of absurd in some place like New York or right. other places where people just drive like dicks, which is, oh, pretty much the entire East Coast. Yeah, see, the problem that I'm seeing with this, and you're right, I'm kind of going along with you here, but it seems like if somebody saw you driving even a little bit slower than what you They'd should be, like, be Look at this they asshole. would come yeah. around you. Yeah. You know, that this is assuming you're at the front of the line and at the light. They would definitely come around you and then cut you off 
So then you'd have to hit the brakes anyway. Right, exactly. That's New York driving. So unless every single person on earth has this thing, right. it's not going to be optimal. I think the scary thing for me, just reading this story, the first thing that came to mind was that, great, this is another thing that's going to distract all of us from driving. I know. Like, they couldn't have just put this as, like, you know, inside your windshield or something like that, or, you know, an audio signal. It really is Speed crazy up. how many distractions there are. Yeah, so now you have to look down at this light compared to how your light's looking. It's, cra- it's crazy. Not to mention all the other cars around you. Not to mention, like, like does anyone else think billboards are inherently absurd? Yeah. Where it's like, sure. oh, don't look at the road. Look at those boobs. I mean, it's not for you. It's, I think they would say it's for the passenger. Oh, well, uh, there's no rules to that. But once you know? you're in a car by yourself, you can't not. That's it. Look. You know? Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Those are designed to distract, distract you. you. All right. That's all I got. Yeah. You guys have any good street light hacks? Well, there was this one thing I remember you could buy that claimed that there was some like wireless technology that ambulances were equipped with that changed mm. lights i think i want to say that emergency services definitely have they have something. to have like some something. kind of remote control maybe i don't know though but think about it but that'd be really dangerous to people exactly. that are anticipating a light and especially like a high-speed intersection where an ambulance is going like 60 miles an hour you can't just go green red yeah it's got to go yellow red well because then we would have a situation like that scene from hackers right remember that where they were all on rollerblades yeah. and they were changing it as they went but then like people an, were crashing yeah. into each other it's like a 30 car pile up yeah. so i don't know i never saw any of those things work but apparently you could buy something that changed the light yeah and people said it was working mm. i de- there's definitely lights out there that are that sense you like, I've been yeah. to a light before where there's no one at the intersection. I pull up to a red light, and, and, it, and it changes. It's, well, those are definitely, I think those are sensors inside on the ground, the ground like electromagnetic something. Yeah. sensors. Something's happening. And then when you have, like, the right frequency or something on top right, of it, it's right. not a weight thing. So but what, when your car drives on top, it'll change. So what I'm curious about is, like, how does this, you know, nationwide database of traffic lights work with ones that are dynamic? Yeah, and how do I get access to that to build something like this myself? Exactly. I read online that you... you Has know, there not an app, right? It could be that easy. Like yeah, this, you like the car's not doing dashboard. anything special that your phone couldn't do. No, it's not connected to anything in the ground. It's just accessing outside stuff. So if you have Wi-Fi on your phone or a strong enough data connection, you could get it. I'm surprised Waze doesn't have that. What's that? You didn't ever use Waze? W-A-Z-E? Mm-mm. No? You ever hear of Waze? Waze? I've, he- I've heard of that. It's like a traffic... like. It, it basically gives you directions based on traffic, right? It's that, and it's also like uh, it's social uh, and socially right, engineered. Right, right, right. So it gives you like, uh, oh, there's an accident here. There's a police officer hiding at this next oh, stop. Oh, that's not illegal. It's not illegal, and people. It's really like a shotgun app. So like, person in sitting shotgun should be using this, not right, the driver, because the driver's got to be like thumbsing up. You know that there was a cop, or there isn't traffic here, or there's not an accident over there. Right, right, right. Um, so there's stuff like that. But I would, I'm surprised that there's not like traffic like data huh, embedded in there. And idea. I think Google just bought them for something stupid. Mm. Hopefully they'll change it to shotgun and not Waze or what Waze. Waze. That's not a good name. Waze. Waze. <laughs> yeah. No, shotgun would be a great name. Shotgun is a good is a good name. Oh man. Someone I need down. a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> no, I read that if if you pull up to one of those uh frequency things in the ground and you know it's definitely there, you can actually, you know, put really strong magnets underneath your car. Yeah. Like I saw a video of a guy on a scooter that put like neodymium magnets uh-huh. underneath his engine and it actually changed right when he was driving over it. That's nuts. Kind of cool. That's pretty nuts. So I want to know how people hack those construction marquees. Which construction You know, those marquees and like you're driving and it just says like, I banged your mom. Oh, like, yeah. That's not useful <laughs> traffic information. Yeah. yeah, I've seen that before too. I always thought those were photoshopped when I see photos. No, like there's the definitely internet. a way to get in there. Huh. And they're independently run like little boxes. Yeah, I got to try that. <laughs> okay, good luck. Not on the year though. I'm not bailing you out of jail when you tamper <laughs> with like, you know, DOT, uh, you know, uh, stuff. Yeah. I'm not going to help you out. Speaking of tampering with public construction. Yeah, go on. Uh, do you remember during Hurricane Sandy, um, did you ever walk within Manhattan? I don't know if you saw people doing this, but it was one of the craziest things I saw during Sandy. It was people that were taking the bottom of street lamps off. Like the, there, was yeah. a, there was like a little door at the bottom of every street lamp. Right. And you could take that off and get access to a power plug. That's true. And since people couldn't use power in their houses... 
and other restaurants and stuff, they were all filled up. Right. People were bringing surge protectors and things it's like crazy. that, inviting other people to plug into the street lights. Yeah. It's crazy. That's nuts. I like seeing stuff like that. It's very cool. Reclaiming City hacks. space. Yeah. You just got to move the little leprechaun out of the way that lives in all the bottoms <laughs> of lampposts. It changes all. He don't mind. He don't mind. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Last story of the day. Uh, so we have to talk about South by Southwest because this app is sort of interesting. And have you guys ever heard of a guy named Andrew Busey? The name didn't strike a chord with me when I first is heard it. Is it Gary Busey's kid? I don't think so. <laughs> then they just no. Their names the same way. Yeah. I didn't hear. Of, I haven't heard of him either before today. But he's actually behind the scenes of a lot of popular technologies we use right now. One of these guys. So he worked on Mosaic, which is you know one of the first internet browsers. And then he's also worked on iChat. He created iChat, the original company before Apple bought them out. Okay. So he's sort of had a long history with chatting applications. And today at South by Southwest, he unveiled his latest project, which is called Banter. So Banter is an iPhone app that's really, really simple. So simple, it just might catch on. And I want to be on record as an early adopter of this. Okay. So banter, the idea is to go back to the old days of AOL chat rooms, right? So you fire up this app, you pick a username and a password, and then you'll see a big list of public rooms that you can join. And the rooms vary from really, really specific topics, you know, like, like indoor gardening or something like that, to just broad, broad topics like music or, you know, animals, whatever. Yeah. And from there, that's it. You just start chatting, but it's all on your phone, so you can pick it up whenever you want. And that is the end of the explanation. <laughs> that's <laughs> not very interesting to me. Super general. Well, all right. I, I mean, mean, I guess like chat rooms were a big deal at one point, but that was in the infancy of the internet when like right. our minds were ready to absorb all kinds of interesting you know, knowledge and, and info yeah. we just wanted to explore. Now we've become much more uh, uh, or less uh, interested in stuff like that. I don't, I don't know, because I would, I would say that a lot of technology now is just about opening up lines of communication, right? That's basically what Twitter or Facebook or Instagram is. Sure. And it seems like a simple idea, but so did Twitter when it first came out. I wonder if they're sort of banking on that business. Well, so it's more than just like, I want to talk about dogs or TV or yeah. movies. You can do it by geography as well, right? right? So like people who are near you. You can talk to people that are around you, maybe arrange meetups if you want, or not. You can anonymize yourself and just talk shit if you wanted to. Yeah. So it's really up to the user how public or private they want to talk. But that's the, it's the internet. That won't happen. Yeah. Oh, what, what won't happen? People talking sh uh, shit to each other. It's not going to happen. Yeah, no, not, no That way. won't happen. I've never People seen that sense. before. It's never happened on the internet. <laughs> yeah. And if it's banter's fault, we're going to have a problem. Right, right. I think it's actually a good idea. Um, See, the, here's you know. where the private features come in is that all messages will disappear after 24 hours. So there's an expiration date. Here and we there's go. There's no record of the chats. Sure. There's no search. Just like Snapchat said. And exactly. then what happened? Yeah. And then we found out there are records of these things. Can, yeah, because screenshots. Just cameras. don't. Yeah, I mean, yeah, okay. Yeah, it's. It, p things can last forever. Right. I don't like. I hate when that's a feature of a product. Self destruction that. does not exist anymore. No. no. It can't. Especially when you're using the internet. When something has to connect to the right. internet. Because it's out there. Servers. It's out there. So, I don't know. I, I think it could be kind of cool. I haven't tried it out yet myself. And no Android love. Huh? No Android love, just for iPhone right now. I mean, it's God. still sort of in its fledgling oh, stage. When people do that, you are saying something. You are saying, I don't care about Android people. I, it's free, too. So, it's not like they're trying to make as much money off of it. I don't, oh, I I don't know it. why. They just want to get why. a following. You yeah. Know? Maybe they think the iPhone people are more savvy. And yeah. Trendy. You know where I can see this really coming in handy is people that pull out their phones to escape awkward situations. Say you're in a party or you're waiting in line for the bathroom at a bar, but you don't have anyone to actually text, nor do you want to start up a conversation you can't leave really quickly. Like a fake thing. You could definitely, yeah, and not have to fake it by just moving icons around on your screen. Yeah, or just like, you know, resizing stuff. Yeah. You could definitely fire this up and just have a five-second conversation. I'm into it, and I'll, and I'll download it when it comes to Android, yeah. which it better. I mean, this interests me because I was a big user of AOL chat rooms Who wasn't? back in the day. Who I'm assuming wasn't? you guys were as well. Yeah, Obviously. I definitely was, yep. Obviously. So which ones were you guys in? Let's get to the dirty. I had a... Um, uh, procedure uh, to erase all those memories. <laughs> oh, really? So I can't speak on that. Okay. All right. 
I have to plead the fifth on that one. <laughs> what? <laughs> You're really just not going to say anything about those days for yourself? I just had nothing but like nefarious ambitions. Oh, like, it you was lost just... your virginity in one of those chat rooms, didn't you? <laughs> and how. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, you know, uh, some of it was like, uh, you know, little you know um I, it's you know, like, <laughs> i'm just gonna stop talking and let you there's, stumble a, there's a lot of like hockey chat rooms i was in a lot of music ones yeah a lot of you know and then that's it it's just <laughs> the internet was so new to everyone yeah. and i was way more into irc which <laughs> should explain a lot oh i was into irc too irc was so much better than yeah. aol it well aol had like music one music two right. and all the way up through irc nine. had uh, anything you want it had anything yeah it was oh man i i would get home from school and be on irc for seven hours right yeah, and then nobody could call the house because you were on a dial-up. Yeah, I'm starting to really remember stuff now, and yeah, I we're, can we're talk about that. I had a friend. A friend. That, <laughs> that's the end of the story. I had one friend once. <laughs> no, uh, I had a friend who used to go into lesbian-specific chat rooms. A male friend. A male friend, yeah, I'm sorry. A male yeah. friend who would pose as a lesbian okay. in lesbian I, chat rooms. I dare you AOL. to surprise me. Go on. <laughs> and that's, I mean, he, that's it. You can yeah. imagine what he would do from there. Sure. He would try to, like, entice people right. to, you know, do the ASL thing. I would, um, I would go into a lot of, like, teen chat rooms yeah? when I was a teenager. Let's, what did, <laughs> let's let's get that straight. <laughs> Yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> what did teens talk about in those chat rooms? Just like, you know, teen problems. Yeah. Like, like the parents suck. <laughs> and, what was going on in Beat Magazine know, that month? You know, like, oh, I hate, you know, chicken again for dinner. Rats. Yeah. yeah. Rats. Man, mom's the worst. Oh, homework sucks. Stuff um, like that. You know, little kid things. Yeah. What about you, Ariel? What were your chat days like? Um, I was really into football back then. So I used to always be in football chat room. Yeah, it's weird. Now yeah. I don't even watch football. And then... Uh, but that's probably just people talking shit to each other because no one agrees on what team is the best. Yeah, exactly. Just like debating on like what happened in the last game and stuff like that. And then I was... Right. Uh, um, I used to, there was an MTV one. I remember I used to go in there and yeah. just talk shit about MTV because I was Mr. Underground Rap dude. Right, right. right You're like right. all these fools. Exactly. On MTV. Exactly. Right. And then I would just try to holler at chicks. Yeah. yeah. That was the main thing. <laughs> yeah, totally. Just send out like 18 got picks, man. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. Things are coming back to me, man. Yeah. Things exactly. are coming back to me right now. <laughs> oh, I had like a goodness. bunch of screen names on AOL. Yeah. And I think I like started like a pen pal relationship with this girl in I, California. Yeah, I definitely had a few of those. And not even like dirty ones. No, no, I mean, no like totally pl friends. Well, not maybe like platonic but like hoping for something more but but grounded in platonic relationship well, yeah. status. What was his name? Bob. No, uh, <laughs> man, I forget her name. I don't remember. We connected because we both really liked less than Jake. I remember. So when you say pen pals, you would just email back and forth? Well, no, like physically got into like physical letters. No way. Yeah, yeah. You now went it's analog. coming back to me, man. Are you serious? Yeah, yeah. Holy shit. Wait, so you exchanged addresses Should I be talking about and then this? you started writing letters to <laughs> so each other? So I it was under like a pseudonym. What was the name? I don't remember. Come on. I don't remember. I swear. I'm telling you everything. <laughs> the I don't story isn't complete if you don't give the details. I don't it was definitely something about Lesnar. It was probably like Pezcore thirty or something. X X Pezcore. Like, whatever it is. <laughs> and I just remember oh man, this is crazy. I just remember like writing her and she lived in like somewhere in northern california and she had like a bunch of dogs and it was like really cool and like her family always like went camping and stuff yeah yeah you obviously included photos like no i don't glamour know glamour shots did. probably right because it was back in the day she probably went to the mall got those glamour <laughs> shots with the column <laughs> with the column do you know what i'm talking about right <laughs> you yeah. really or, like the backdrop I, and the column that was some west probably. coast mid midwest crap no one yeah. on the east coast did really that. yeah dude you, do you guys know what I'm does anybody know what i'm talking about right now? i know exactly. yes i know what, what a get, glamour like, shot 500 is. wallet prints yeah. that you'd hand out to all your friends that didn't give a yeah. shit about it. Yeah, yeah we know what that was but none of us did that uh i did that because well, yeah. you grew up where you grew up did you do that i i did that I yeah, did that. yeah like yeah. fake prom photos basically. yeah exactly I, everyone over here was making fun of that <laughs> oh really <laughs> yeah dude, it was all like middle america malls and shopping nah, you know, it was like california this is yeah, california. that too anyway but anyway, we didn't all we weren't cool enough to have pen pals with dogs. I know. And they weren't I wasn't speaking with dogs. I was speaking with the girl. <laughs> and she was my age and I remember we had like a lot in common. <laughs> she, uh, it's cute that you believe everything she told you. I think she might have sent a photo of her. 
I don't remember her name. I want to say her name was like something with an L, like Laura or Lori or Lena or something like that. Mm. And uh, yeah, we had it. We had we continued it for like eight months. Wow, yeah. that's impressive for a young kid yeah. too. I mean, I must have been like fifteen. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. So then, what happened? You never like actually met up. No, we never met up. Um, yeah, I don't know. It was really weird. Like uh, uh, the whole AOL thing. Like that was I. I'm trying to remember. For me, that was still popular leading up to college. Or mm-hmm. well, maybe it was like AIM because mm-hmm. AIM was like AIM the biggest. Rides, yeah. AIM was like all. It, it was like the main platform for communication in college for me. There was no G Chat right. and there was nothing like that. Right. And I remember talking to people because what you would do is. You know, I went to Towson University and I started in the year 2000. Right. And I remember putting that in my profile. And mm-hmm. I guess you could like search profiles back then. Mm-hmm. And I started getting random IMs from people being like, oh, I'm going to be a freshman in the fall in Towson. What's your deal? Right. And I met probably like a dozen people before I got to college through right. that. And you would like look at their profiles and I'd be like, oh, this guy's doing lowercase, uppercase. I don't want to meet this guy. <laughs> right, <laughs> right, right, right. I, forget, I remember those people. <laughs> Dude, those people <laughs> yeah. freaked me out. What were they doing? No was idea. it like, it was like graffiti for them. Oh, it took so much effort to yeah. like, those profiles. get a life. Days to and I knew right away, that's how you like separated the people you wanted to meet and, yeah. and, and that. And I, one of them, one of the girls I wound up meeting, who I'm still very good friends with, mm-hmm. wound up living with uh, Stacy. And oh that's, whoa. yeah, and there was like this whole. Is that how you met Stacy? No, Stacy was from my hometown. We weren't friendly, but you knew who she was. But I knew she that. was. But it wound up being this girl who reached out to me on through AOL. I, I wound up meeting in person like immediately when I got to college. Wow. It's crazy. It could have been different. It could have ended up in some alternative universe. Maybe you met up with that other girl with the dog. Dude, it's totally. It's it's cra- it was crazy. I I don't even really remember how I met her. I just know it was through like maybe IRC or AOL or something like right, that. Right, right. Mm-hmm. But in retrospect, I think like things were way more uh, innocent back then. No, there was still predators. I'm sure there was. I'm sure girls. there was. And obviously, you know, maybe I just have like this, you know, biased attachment, emotional attachment. I mean, but yeah, it's every every relationship. Yeah, it was a lot of sh- talking to strangers, which is something you were like always always told not to do right but because millions of miles separated each other right it was like okay well that's the thing I, like for us you know that went through all that stuff the aol days it's probably not a big deal that a, a application like banter exists now no. but for kids who just don't have any recollection of that it's probably something kind of novel for them right who knows it was <laughs> i remember the stupidest thing I would use a pseudonym, but I gave her my real address. Yeah. I was like, right. hey, this is, you know, Jim. Right. Living in, you know, my home address. Yeah. <laughs> I was just like, here's here's how I'll seal my, cover my tracks. Right, She'll right. Never, it's just like. <laughs> wow, you definitely got catfish. I want to know who that was. No way, man. It was totally uh, reciprocal. It was ne- There was never like, I didn't like send her money. Right. I I, there was nothing, she didn't take advantage of me. That was definitely a middle school janitor that you were talking to. So be it. I mean, whoever. Whoever he or she was, they were super compassionate. Yeah, and, good like, conversationalist. And, yeah, it was never sexual. It was never like, I want to kiss you on the face. It was always right. like, oh, that's so cool you live in New Jersey. Oh, that's cool. That's We're, so And no one had adorable. ever said that to me before. Yeah. Before. <laughs> no, but that was, you have any experiences like that? Uh, nah, not real, not that personal. I mean, I'm not a freaking weirdo or anything. But... I do remember putting a lot of effort into my away messages. Sure. Which sure. was something of an art back I mean, in the day, composing always, your perfect away message. Right. It was just always... Song lyrics. A song lyrics. Constantly <laughs> song lyrics. It was just you know, like, it was like Gorilla Biscuit song lyrics. No, for me, it was like Tony Rich Project song yeah. lyrics and things like that. No, maybe some Gorilla Biscuits. Like Definitely. whatever you were like very, very passionate about the at wor- the time. The worst part about those things were like they only worked for you in your head. Yeah. Someone like out of context, someone would read that and be like, "What the hell does he mean?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you can't hear it being sung the way you hear it in your head. Even then, people are just like, "God, stop being dramatic." Yeah, seriously. <laughs> you have n- no reason to identify with these nine-inch nails yeah, lyrics. Grow up. Living in Huntington Beach, California. Yeah, your all your problems. Get some yeah. real pl- problems, will you? Let's revive this chat room age with banter. So yeah, let us know if you guys have tried this out or what other weird encounters you've had through AOL chat rooms back in the day. I like hearing about that stuff. I would totally start like an ongoing 404 chat in there. Yeah? Can you do that? Can you, you can, create chat You can rooms? create chat rooms. Yeah, that would right, reoccur. All right, so then we'll do that. You want to do that? Yeah, I mean, you I just want to like have access to it because I'm a putz with an Android phone, but yeah? I'll All figure right. it out. All right, sweet.
That's it. I think that's going to do it for us today. Thanks for listening, everyone. Send us an email, the 404 at CNET.com. You can check out our Facebook and our Instagram. How is our Facebook thing going? Do we like what's the deal with our Facebook? I think it's still there. It's, it's kind of dusty. Yeah, we got to blow the dust dusty. off that. Uh, and then go to our subreddit, reddit.com slash r slash the 404. Lots of funny crap going on in there. So make sure you head over to that site. We had someone write in and was like, dude, you guys got me on Reddit and I'm suing you now. What? And we're like, no, we can't be responsible for your addiction. Yeah. So. There's always one. I mean, there's always one. And we have a disclaimer now. And then head over to the blog, cnet.com slash the 404 to see all of the links from today's show stories and to watch the video because that's super important. You can subscribe in iTunes and all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. So make sure you do that. We're back here tomorrow. Everyone have an awesome Monday. We'll see you then. I'm Jeff Bacalar. I'm Justin Yu. I'm Ariel Nunez. This has been the 404 Show. High tech, low brow. Have an awesome Monday, even though it's Monday. We'll see you. (laughs) 